to the 68th edition of Drive Through Review. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Frank's Zoo, and it's quite a bit uh, older of a game. I think it came out in the late 90s. Uh, if you're watching these videos in real time, I'm going to follow this video with three other videos of uh, small little card games, and basically starting with the oldest one, working up to a newer one, and then one that came out this year, and one that's technically not really out, kind of coming out right now. Uh, so I've had a chance to play a lot of these games with my lunch group, and we've enjoyed all of them, so I like them all, and uh, so I just want to show you a little bit about how they work, and they're kind of under the radar type of game, so if you've uh, got a group that likes card games, or you know a game that you can play multiple times in a row, or also maybe in a lunch group setting where you can you got an hour, let's say, and you want to play a couple of games, you can do that. Uh, so all these games are good, like I said, and the first one is Frank Zoo which is a trick-taking game that is a little bit simpler of a trick-taking game as opposed to something like Chichu or Big Two and that kind of thing. But I still really like this game, and I'll show you how it works. But it's kind of a, it could be kind of a kid's trick-taking game if you play it like the basic way. But if you play the full rules of it, it's really very, very interesting, unique take on the whole trick-taking thing. So let me show you how it works, and I'll come back. So in the game of Frank Zoo, you're going to get a deck of cards, and it's going to be unlike any deck of cards you've seen before. Basically, you've got all these different pictures of animals on the cards, and then a little sort of thought bubble kind of thing above the animal of what will uh, beat them or be the next step in the ladder. So in this case, if somebody had played a polar bear, then an elephant or a killer whale could be played on top of them to keep going up the trick ladder. Whereas a mouse here, you can see they're beat by pretty much anything. Now, you can see there's sort of a, a brown sort of uh, outline there, and this one has a brown and also a blue. So there's kind of two basic, uh, you know, trees or forks. You've got sort of land animals and then sea animals. And then in this case, the polar bear kind of belongs to both. Now, there's not really any sort of uh, scientific explanation for any of these because obviously killer whales, well, killer whales will eat a polar bear, <laughs> but... Elephants, you know, they don't aren't anywhere near polar bear, so it's not really a matter of, you know, one eating the other. So to start the game, you're going to deal out the entire deck of cards to all the players. And it doesn't matter how many players are playing the game, you can play from four to seven players. And actually, there's a couple of variants uh, to play with three players as well. You're going to deal out all the cards to everybody, and then determine a start player. Now, the first round of the game is going to be the setup round, whereas the rest of the rounds of the game will be sort of the meat of the game. So let's just walk through what a basic sort of round will look at. On your turn you can play a card. And if you play a card you can just play any card at the start of the game. Or you could play a set of cards. So if I wanted to play two hedgehogs I could. But in this case let's say I played, played one hedgehog. So I could do that. Now this can only be followed by a fox or one more of the same kind. So if I had played two he uh, hedgehog and then Bill on to my left maybe could play two hedgehogs. Now this can only be followed by either three hedgehogs, but one more of the same type, or two foxes. So now it's uh, Andy's turn, and Andy's going to play two foxes. And so it'll keep going around like this. So now the next player could either play three foxes, or two of any of these kinds here. So there's two elephants, so I could play two elephants. And now you see, the elephant can only be bested by the mice. or three elephants because you can always play one more than whatever the last uh, you know set of cards was so in this case I could play two mice and you keep going around and around until whoever has played the you know last card uh, will then collect all the cards and they'll win the trick and then lead off the next trick with whatever combination of cards that they want uh, just a couple special cards in terms of the trick taking process is you can see the killer whale here he's not beat by anything so if for some reason the last card played was a killer whale, the only thing you could play on top of this would be two killer whales. Also, we've got one joker in the deck. He can never be played alone. He can be played in combination with any card. And then you've got a mosquito here. And a mosquito can act, actually act as a wild elephant. So if I wanted to play two elephants or three elephants, I could do so. Now you can only have one mosquito in your set. You can't do like two mosquitoes and an elephant. You can only have one mosquito in your set. Now, otherwise, you can play it as a mosquito, which is then beat by a mouse, a school fish, or a hedgehog. And like I said, these don't make any sense. So that's pretty much it. You're going to play the first round. Everybody's going to collect whatever cards they have. The cards that you collect are not important in the first round. It doesn't matter anything about the cards that you collect. 
Now let's say we were playing a four player game and you determine the winner by whoever is the first to go out. The winner is going to get four points, second place will get three, third place will get two, and then whoever goes out last actually gets zero points. And then what you're going to do is break into teams temporarily for the next round. So let's say in this case uh, we had the whale player, the elephant player, the polar bear player, and the mosquito player. And the whale was in first and second, third, and fourth finally with the mosquito. So the whale will get four points like I said. And then for the next round he's going to be partnered with the third place player. And so these two players are going to play as partners. Whereas the second and fourth place player, the elephant and the mosquito in this play, uh, case, are going to be partners as well. Now, the polar bear and the mosquito are going to be junior partners of their respective partners. So the way that this is going to work, you're going to deal out all the cards again in the same way as the first round. But when it's the junior partner's turn to play a trick, let's say the polar bear guy needed to beat a trick of two hedgehogs. But they only had one fox. So they could ask, they need to show the card, and they'd, say, they'd ask their senior partner, do you have a hedgehog? And his senior partner could throw in and add their card into whatever the, the junior partner was trying to make. And that way, you know, they're both getting rid of the cards. However, the senior partners cannot ask the junior partners for help. Now, the other thing that the partners are going to do is each partner is going to give the other partner two cards face down to start the round. So the whale would give two cards to the bear, bear would give two cards to the whale, and the elephant would give two to the mosquito and vice versa. And this is a nice little, there's some little strategic things that as you play the game a couple of times and based on where everybody's sitting, because you don't change seats, you know, depending on your partner, because you're going to be changing partners every round, there's some nice little, you know, minor strategy that you can do in, in this part of the game. And then let's say we had a scoring. Now remember, these two were partners here, and then these two are partners here. So let's say the order of the players going out in the second round was like so. So the polar bear went out first. Now he's going to get four points, but his partner here, the mosquito, is also going to get those four points because you're going to share all those points. And then since the mosquito got out second, he's going to get three points and his partner is also going to get three points. So they're going to share those points. Finally, the whale went out third, so he's going to get two and his junior partner here, the elephant, is going to get two. And the elephant went out last, so him and the, his partner, the whale, share zero points. And then you're going to add up all the points from the first and the second round, figure out who's in first and who's in second and who's in third again. And then you're going to reset the partner. So maybe this time, randomly, I'm just picking these. The mosquito and the whale are partners, and then the bear and the elephant are the partners. And then you deal all the cards out again, and then you just keep playing and playing and playing until, you know, a fixed number of points or, or whatever you want to feel like you want to play to. Now, after the first round, there's a couple of special scoring cards that are going to be considered. And those are the Lions and the Hedgehogs. Now, in the first round, these cards don't matter. They just matter for, you know, taking the trick and trying to get rid of your cards. But after the first round, you're going to want to try to actually get some of these cards specifically. So let's look at the Lion first. So the Lion is nice because if you have more than one Lion, so if you've got, let's say, one, two, three Lions in the cards that you've taken you're going to get one point for each lion. So you get, in this case, you're, you would get three points. If you only had one lion, then you don't get any bonus for that. However, if you're the last player to go out and you have lions in your hand, you're going to lose a point for each lion, no matter how many you have in your hand. So you want to get rid of these. You don't want other players to get them, though, because this is a nice three points. Finally, we've got the hedgehogs. Now, if you don't have any hedgehogs in the pile of cards that you took, for this round, then you lose one point. If you have at least one hedgehog, then you don't lose that point. If you have more than one, it doesn't matter. You just want to try to get at least one hedgehog in your stack of cards so you don't lose a point. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed that overview. Uh, I want to mention uh, in a face-to-face -face here about a five and a seven player game. So in an odd or even number player of games, either four and a six, everybody pairs up with the partners evenly. But in a, let's say in a five player game, that third place player from the previous round is actually going to play by himself. And instead of exchanging two cards with, you know, the other partner, you actually just discard two cards straight down to your, your, your trick pile. So you may have already, uh, you may put two lions down there just so you've already got the lions or something like that. And you're not going to be able to, you know, ask for help 
if because you, you're not a junior partner to anybody but you're going to automatically get two points at the end of the round no matter what just for you know for being alone plus whatever points you get for what position you go out so it's kind of interesting some rounds you'll be a partner some rounds you'll be by yourself sometimes you'll be the junior partner and so you want to help somebody but sometimes if you're the senior partner you don't always want to help them you don't want to like give them lions to take because you may not be able to take that trick when it comes back around to you so it's a really really interesting little game uh, and it's kind of interesting the different paths you have and as you learn sort of the rhythm of the cards and how they're going to come out and, and you can do a lot of card counting like that. It's, uh, it's a real basic game. You could play this with kids and kind of throw out all the scoring rules and everything like that. But it's nice because it's, you know, trick taking with basically three to seven players. And it just, it's a fun, quick little game. And there is a, some definite elements of strategy to it. So it's something... Uh, I would definitely recommend. I think it's still readily available. So even though it's an older game, it should still uh, be around. So anyway, take a look at it. Thanks.